Welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Always glad that you do. We have a very interesting show planned for you, ways that you can connect with communi the community and some of you may already have, and something we're going to share in just a moment, uh, a little bit later in the show, we are very um, honored to, to feature a community organization that is helping foster children that age out of the system and become adults. A scary time for them. And we're going to share with you, talk with you about them in just a moment. So you want to stay tuned in, in for that. We're going to get some quality time and show you a little bit what's happening here in Pinellas County to help these children on uh, young adults. But before that, some of you may have participated in an event uh, recently called Care Fest, and Elise Merritt, our reporter for Bay Focus, was there. Yes. Uh, so tell us what what this was. Tell us what what you went and did. Okay. So it's it's a week long blessing, I would call it, where they make everything caretagious, and they have okay. it sponsored by Somebody Cares Tampa Bay, where. Everyone comes from the community, different parts of the community to help dilapidated homes get repaired. So it would be yeah. for like the elderly, the veterans, the disabled, yeah. all people who have been maybe in violation of county ordinances. Um, they need help and they can't do it themselves. So the community comes together and really supports these individuals. Okay, and you went out to a specific location. We're going to show that. Yes. And there, there really was a, a day too that was on. Yes. It was on a Saturday mm -hmm. where they did a big push. Although Fair they fest. do this year round, but it was a big push that every year they do on, yes. that, on that Saturday. So uh, we're going to take a look at what you found out when you went, and you got to talk with some really great people too. So let's take a look at Elise Merritt's report from some somebody cares Tampa Bay's Care Fest. What a great day for CareFest at St. Therese, where City on a Hill Church holds their services. Hi, this is Elise Merritt reporting for Bay Focus. And first, we start out by driving to the Care Project to visit Eleanor as she invites the CareFest crew to help repair and refurbish her home and invites us in for a little chat. Thanks for letting us interview you. You're very welcome. I'm glad. You're here. Yes. I'm glad the workers are here. Somebody Cares Tampa Bay aims to develop a caretagious culture to the community in donations, giving, and mostly refurbishing homes. They're doing gutters, and they're doing trees, and they're doing um, palm trees. You know, a lot of things just grow wild in Florida. Up the sides of my garage and the house and the fences, and it's just gonna look like a different yard. Like a new home, like yeah. a new yard. Yeah, it will. So how did this come about again? What was the turning point for you to get involved? There was trees from the other yards over into my yard, which the city was going to find me for. <gasps> oh my. So I was fortunate to find this ad in the, my water bill. I feel bad because I am i can't do it. It's just, I'm too old, I'm too weak. I had a heart attack like seven weeks ago and I'm just still wow. weak from that. But it's amazing what they're doing. What a pleasure it was to visit with Eleanor. Now heading back to the Care Fest where the crowds have started gathering already on lines for food and fellowship and meeting some wonderful people along the way and learning about Pastor Mike Conway who worked with founder Daniel Bernard to start it all as well as Andre Hudson. So if you can tell us what Care Fest means to you, how you got involved and how this experience has touched and changed your life, that would be wonderful. I got involved, first of all, with uh, City on the Hill, mm -hmm. and Pastor Mike Conway, which you guys will meet shortly, uh, happens to be a great man of God that simply encouraged us all to give back as well as to participate in being part of the kingdom. And he showed me my faults, but then he took me and showed me scripture and actually opened my eyes to who God really was and how forgiving it was. And, uh, you know, and it gave me an opportunity to really live because even at that point, I didn't know that I was a dead man walking. You wow. get what I'm saying? And so uh, as he has put it on me, I'm putting it on other people. How could you encourage churches or viewers to get involved? And what would you say could allow them to get involved the best? Well, I think the most important thing is do it. You know, um, I, there's a lot of people who talk about, I love my city, but you don't love your city if you're not in your city. 
If you're not out serving, what will you love your city because you go and take advantage of what the city offers? But there are hungry people out there. There are there are people that, that need help. There are veterans, there are elderly, there are single moms that need help. And so what James said it best, what good is it, my brothers, if you see someone who is hungry and you say, go and be well warm and well fed, but do nothing about their need? It's if you're a real believer, an honest believer, a true believer in Jesus, you have to serve. You don't, it, it's something that's in your DNA. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. I've seen the people who have been served by this. I've seen people come into the kingdom through CareFest. Yeah. So there you have it. We are gifted to serve and we are blessed to be a blessing. Go to Somebody Cares Tampa Bay to find out how you can serve or even if you need to be served. Thank you so much, Elise, for that report. What a great event CareFest is. Well, we're going to now introduce you to an organization called Ready for Life Pinellas that helps foster young adults. When they turn 18, age out of the foster care system, what happens then? And this organization is there to help them. Let's take a look. We have hundreds of kids that age out of foster care every year and they need assistance, they need an advocate. And that's what Ready for Life provides. We, we saw this as a chance to be the connection between the need and the already existing things. Well, with Ready for Life, you it's a unique opportunity for foster kids to be able to learn skills that they don't have currently. What I find at Ready for Life is that they give them a sense of hope and empowerment. I enjoy the fact that they help kids who didn't have the proper help um, out of foster care, coming out of foster care or going in. It's pretty simple. There's no other organization out there like us. We have open door policy. We give chances after chances. We try to help better these kids after they turn 18. When the youth come out of foster care, they're often without a driver's license, sometimes without a diploma, and then consequently often without a job. They don't know how to do their laundry yet. They don't know how to cook yet. So it's important to have a company that specializes in meeting those needs before they go off on their own and live their own life. They'll be surviving with skills rather than just flying by to see their pants and getting into trouble. There's not a program like Ready for Life anywhere. I know when I aged out of foster care, I didn't have um, the skills or the education or the knowledge to be out by myself at 18 having my first apartment. You know, we have kids who are homeless on the street. They can build from this to do whatever they want. And I mean, as soon as you come in, you're greeted with uh, a bunch of kids that, you know, aged out of foster care, had the same experiences as you. Part of our staff are, are former foster care youth. We do have youth that aged out of foster care on staff. All the youth specialists, myself included, we all aged out of foster care or have been in the foster system. So I understand everything that these kids are going through. I lived it. From the get-go, we decided we would listen to the youth. We'd include them in everything we do. They've lived it. They've walked in those shoes. The help that it gives me and other youth is actually uh, kind of impressive and it kind of inspired me to become a social worker myself. So many of the staff has a genuine concern for each other and those that they're helping. I am able to sit with them and talk with the different girls that I mentor and try to help them, you know, meet their dreams and goals that they have. Beyond that, we're really like a family. I mean, we laugh together, we cry together, we learn together. We're the only system out there, basically. We're a family. They give hope by changing lives and changing thoughts and patterns of thinking. One of the most valuable things I get to see is when a young adult passes their GED and shows pride in what they've done or when they get their first apartment and we've helped them to do that. Ready for Life actually really, really does make an impact. You know, when you age out of foster care, most people will toss you off to the side and you have nothing. Ready for Life, they give you housing, they give you food. Um, you can come in there and if you need a nap, you can take a nap. If you need a shower, you can take a shower. If you need food, you can get food. We are trying to make a difference in their lives and make them better young adults. I recently became aware of Ready for Life. Did not know it existed. Did not know what happened to aged out foster children. 
I didn't realize that there's such a tremendous need. I think you should donate to our program because there are not a lot of companies that do what we do. Uh, when kids age out of foster care, they really don't have the necessary life skills and the things they need to establish a life on their own. We have to go out and seek community support. And we don't run off of government monies. It's simply private, uh, big-hearted people. It, it makes a difference. Every dollar makes a difference. That's why they should help us, because there's no one out there doing what we do. Every little bit makes a big impact in their lives. Those kids need all the help you can possibly give. In my opinion, I'm just happy as the director of the food pantry to be able to give back. Every dollar helps us provide food or shower space or the, the supplies that they need just to feel more human. I would encourage people to donate to the program because of the services they provide to the youth. I want everyone to know about Ready for Life and get involved in some way in our community. These kids need to have a chance. They need, they need to have a sense of purpose and feel that there's hope and a future. To donate or find out more, visit readyforlifepinellas.org. Well, that gives you a look at Ready for Pinellas. And we're going to get into a little bit more detail on this organization, exactly what they do to help young adults. And we have with us Kathy Mize, who is the CEO of Ready for Life Pinellas. And we're so honored to have you with us. Thanks for coming oh, today. Thank you for this opportunity. You know, and I found out um, also, you not only are the CEO, but you are one of the founders of yes. this group. Um, so, wow, what a tremendous um, organization of what you're doing. But for further explanation coming out of that video, what exactly is Ready for Life Pinellas in terms of your history, your mission? I love the term that you're a solution-based Skill Center. I love that term. Um, but tell us a little bit about more your mission and your a little bit of your history. Sure. Ready for Life was started 15 years ago um, because there was a huge need. There was a gap where youth were in foster care, and if they didn't get adopted and didn't go home, which happens very often, then they aged yeah. out. They turned 18, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And there was really no one on the other side to walk with them and yeah. to help them gain the skills that maybe they didn't get when they were in foster care. So we started, uh, didn't even have a name, didn't know what we'd look like. And here we are 15 years later, really trying to fill in those life skills and learning gaps that were never put in place while they were in foster care. I really like the term ready for life. <laughs> it's like ready or yeah. not, here it comes. Life is coming and there has to be a way to, to do this. And um, one thing too um, is you are, you're beginning to start expanding. It's ready for life Pinellas, but you are working on expansion as well, correct? Into other yes. areas. Our goal is we're going to go into Pasco next. Yeah. And then our goal is to be in as many communities as we can be in, as well as yeah. other states. We are open to I replicating that. a model that has worked. I love that. Okay. Give us the specifics of the program. There are a variety of areas that you that you do to give keys to independence. I like that term you use to the young adults that come to you. Yes. Yeah. And that is a program in itself to help them mm -hmm. learn how to drive and get their driver's license. Yeah. You know, many times they don't get what oh, a lot of really is. I didn't it I really it was is. like multiple keys. No, That's that is driving. a program. Yes. I love that. because they age out and many of them don't have a driver's license. But wow, we really start where they are. Um, yeah. We are a crisis stabilization center as well. Mm -hmm. uh, more than half of those we serve are homeless. So when they first come in, the first thing we do is let them get a shower, wash their clothes. We give them new clothes. We sit them down and give them a hot meal um, and really try and get their dignity back and just get their bearings back. And then at that point, we can start talking with them and see where they are. What are their next steps? How do we line up beside them? And we have a therapist on site as well. And then you're we work about together. Health. You're talking about a mental yes, health counselor. We do, right on site. And so really it's up to them. And we're just there to help them figure out what's next for them, whether it's get a job, get back in school, um, anything your family would do for kids that you have. That's what we're yeah. up to every yeah. day. Well, you do an, um, one of the things you do, you, you do an educational learning um, area as well too, right? Part of what you do. We do. Many of them have been in 25 and 30 different foster homes, sometimes five to even 10 high schools. So imagine how far behind they are. A lot of them yeah. are at a fourth or fifth grade level. So again, we start where they are. And our goal is to help them get back in high school or get their GED, because then we can talk about what's next. Is it college? Is it a certification in a certain trade? You know, what does it look yeah. like for them? Yeah. But keep them moving along a path that will lead to self-sufficiency. 
Yeah, that, and that's, that's a really important term because um, self-sufficiency is what you're going for because they're, yes. they're, they're going to need to be it. But you also do some other things, too, where you do mentors. Uh, tell us about that. Mentoring would be so important. Yeah, um, we've always listened to the youth voice, to those we serve, and that's how we develop the programs that we have. And a few years in, we asked them, what's one thing you still need that you don't have? And they said, we want one person that cares we're alive, just one. And out of that came our Be The One mentor program. And I will tell you, those young adults that have a mentor in their life are far more successful. They're mm -hmm. on the other end yeah. of that phone just to be there. Yeah. And you're mentoring an adult, you know, so it's very different yeah. than a lot of yeah. programs in our community. Um, but it's so successful and it's so necessary. And um, where do those mentors come from? Do, are they volunteers? or are, They are. Yeah. Everywhere. We have a lot of churches that support us. We I go out that. and we speak to civic organizations. Um, anywhere we can go, we tell them about Ready for Life. And there's a place for everyone. It may not be being a mentor, but we need tutors to help them move along in education, people to help with resumes, help them to find a job, even yeah. people that can come and rock babies if they're in our office working on some of these things. Yeah. So we use over a hundred volunteers to come beside us. Wow, you you, you need it, or do you actually have a hundred? We right have, now? and we need more. Oh yes, my goodness! Absolutely, that is a that is a force. Yes, it is. It's <laughs> a small is, army. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, that is. Um, okay, and I was also in um, in kind of engaged with uh, you know um, kind of got my attention a youth council. Yes, what is that? Again, it's really listening to those we serve. That's how we started. You know, we didn't yeah. know what the needs were. I wasn't in foster care. So I will never assume that I know what their needs are. Yeah. So we have young adults that serve on staff that have lived that life. Mm -hmm. They serve on our board of directors. They serve on our committees. And wow. really they come together and so that we are following really what the needs are. And we're listening to them in everything we do. So that would be, they would form your your council. Yes, absolutely. Kind of be your in. Now, do those that that are, have been through the system and come on staff with you, um, how did they get? Did they come through your program? Did they come through first? They did. Yes, they came. So they went first. through your whole program yes. first. Yep, and they lived it. And and again, we've always had staff, you know, that aged out. Yeah. Um, and the ones we have now have ones been there nine years already. Whew. And so they have lived it. They get it. Yeah. And they can sit there and work with you know, the young adults coming behind them. Yeah. And they're the experts. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. And we saw, we met a few of those in the video. Yes. You know, they were on there. So how important that is. Where now then do you, these young adults that are coming out of the foster care system, are you hearing about them before they age out? Are you trying to be out there and get the word out that you're here? Are you referred to them by other organizations? Where do they come from? All of the above. Um, we partner with lots of community organizations that, that touch yeah. the lives of those in foster care. And so we get them that way. Our goal is to get to them while they're still in foster care and help with that transition. Um, but the majority of our work is 18 to 25 years old. Um, really, a big way we get these young adults now is word of mouth. Because young adults come to us and then they go tell others that they were in foster care with. You've got to go to Ready for Life. You know, this is what they have. They've got resources. You can get a bus pass so you can get around. They'll help you get your driver's license. You know, they'll help you find a job and on and on. So a lot of it is word of mouth now since we've been around 15 years. We saw in the, in the video, too, you have a food pantry. You have all of this. And, and it, this is donations from the community, or how are you doing this? It is. Um, not yeah. only do we have all these volunteers, but we have volunteers that, that stock our pantry. And we have hygiene products. We also have a good day store that has, you know, brand new clothes even sleeping bags and tents for those that are homeless. Um, but our pantry is used all the time. And it's stocked with just lots of food they can take with them. You know, that one of the things you just mentioned, you, you mentioned a couple times homelessness. Part of what you do is trying to get these young people homes too. <laughs> Tell me about housing. You try to work with that too. We do. And that's probably the biggest crisis we have now. Um, just trying to get them a place to live yeah. because the rent is so high. Yeah. And sometimes they might have a criminal background or they've never rented, so they have no rental history. So it's very difficult. There's a lot of barriers in place that aren't there normally for people. However, I will tell you, we are about to have a home dedication next week with Habitat. This will oh. be our third young adult that will be a homeowner through wow. Habitat. And so this population is amazing. They just need someone to come beside them, cheer them on, 
And, and what they can do is unbelievable. So we are seeing homeowners now. I love the, the partnership with Habitat yes. for Humanity, which we've had them on. We'll, we are going to also have them on again in, in the near future here, talking about everything they do and partnering with, with, with you guys. I love that. I absolutely love it. All right. You are a, um, this is a huge undertaking. <clears throat> you are a um, nonprofit, not-for-profit yes. organization. How do you do all this financially? With our community. And with yeah. our volunteers, um, we receive very little government funding and, and we do that um, intentionally mm -hmm. um, so that we can be creative and we can be solution based. Yeah. Um, so our community comes beside us. We have fundraisers. We write grants. We depend on corporations, individuals, um, you name it. So we're always looking for funding as well as items to come into our office, such as the food pantry or things to wash clothes, the detergent, all of those items. Okay, um, many of our viewers, you know, I know we have a cross section of viewers of people, you know, hopefully channel surfing that find us, but we also have many supporters of CTN that are uh, Christians and churches. How do you partner with, with churches and faith-based um, people that are oriented that way? Why, yeah, I know you want to get to see more people get involved. You mentioned a little bit earlier in the interview that you do have some support. Is that a group you would love to address in this show? Say we could use your help. Absolutely. Um, not only volunteering, but we have churches that actually take up offerings oh, and send goodness. us those funds. Other churches have different uh, funds that they have that go right back out as a mission type fund. So we apply to those. But we want churches, civic groups, individuals, schools, you name it. Yeah. Anyone that has some time and just wants to get involved. You know, we welcome everyone and there is a place for everyone. Now, I'm, I'm throwing you a question here that um, that. Um, you know, I like to do now. I know it's kind of off the cuff, but yeah, <laughs> I gave her no advanced knowledge on this. Um, but um, paint me a picture of somebody you've worked with, some of these young, or a composite of the young people that have come through your doors. Um, what would signify a uh, success story for you? What have you watched, walked through? What have you personally witnessed that um, just keeps you going? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. And I think that's what I want people to know. The things you see on the news usually are very dismal and the statistics yeah. are, but we have so many success stories. Again, they just need a cheerleader. They yeah. walk in our door one way and by the time they leave, they feel like they've gained a family. They feel like they have their dignity back. There's hope. Um, you know, many have been on drugs or in jail before and they're working hard to change their life completely. Uh, we have several that have joined the military some that have gotten master's degrees. Wow. I mean, the list goes on and on. Many are parenting. We have 136 little ones that are being parented by these young adults, which means wow. they're not in foster care. And we're breaking that cycle. Wow. And this, your, your skill center, your location, they can just keep coming to and utilize the services as needed. Correct? Absolutely. You're not saying you're here for a year, you're done, the next people. They, this becomes their Their, their resource. family. Their family. Um, we now yeah. have a group we call the alumni that are over 25 because we've wow. been around 15 years. We yeah. do Thanksgiving for hundreds, Christmas for hundreds. Uh, we really wow. are their family. Wow. That, that, it's you know, amazing. That, that's impressive to me. And why I really want to encourage our viewers to get involved because that's impressive. They're, it's not a, uh, it, it's a situation that you're, it's ongoing. Absolutely. It's ongoing. There, there's follow-up. There's a sense of connectedness. You know, mm -hmm. they're, um, they're, they're, they're able to stay with a group of people. Um, so you have enough room still. This looks to me like you like the, you do need to expand out. Yes. All right, yes. what's the best way that our viewers can help you right now? They can go uh, to our website, which is yeah. readyforlifepinellas.org. We're on Facebook. We're on all the social media. Yeah. Um, they can also call us. Um, again, it's on the website, our yeah. email, everything. We're yeah. right here in Largo. Um, we'd love to have you come take a tour and really see firsthand what we're up to. And also, is it um, if somebody's watching and and they know of somebody that maybe could utilize your server, know of some young adults or a young adult, um, um, what's the best way for that to happen? Is it through the website as well? Like, hey, uh, like they know somebody that needs help. What would what would they do? Sure, call us or just send an email to info at readyforlifepinellas.org. Okay. And but you can go through the website as well. So Okay, and you can send an email through the website, yes, I believe. Yes, yes, as I recall. And you can sign up for our newsletter so you can stay up to date on everything going yeah. on at Ready for Life. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, Kathy, I am so impressed with all of this. I, um, I've done, I mean, we were talking before the show, done a number of interviews over the years about foster care and the need that is there for um, foster families to come, to come alongside yes. children that need good foster homes, that need, you know, help. But there's just been a great realization. And for 15 years, you guys have already been on the front lines. Right. Of what happens when they age out, you know, and it is a scary time. It's a scary it time is. for young people. Absolutely. What happens and how they can get a, a leg up. So thank you so much. Thank you. For being on the show. And we're going to show you on the screen again how you can contact Ready for Life Pinellas. I really hope that you will do something um, you know, financially for sure, but even if there's volunteering you can do, um, things you can provide for the pantry, uh, a variety of ways that you can help them. So stay tuned on the screen. Here's how you can contact Ready for Life Pinellas, and we will be right back with more Bay Focus. Bay Focus, thank you so much for tuning in. We have so many things to tell you about. There's some exciting things coming up. The power of God is so much stronger. The power of Jesus is so much stronger. Well, I want to say thank you today to um, our guest, Kathy Mize, here from Ready for Life Pinellas. Wow, what an incredible organization. I hope you'll get behind and help foster care young adults that age out. Uh, so many ways that you can help them. And I also want to thank Somebody Cares Tampa Bay for allowing us to come in and take our cameras for Elise. Thank Elise for going out and, and showing us what actually happens at CareFest and and some of the uh, interviews she did. Wow, what a great event. We're always so happy to help promote every year. And thank you for tuning in to Bay Focus. I hope you will be in touch with us. All the different ways that you can are on the screen. And we will see you next week. May God richly, richly bless you.